Hello chess fans and welcome to chess 5 and today I'm going to show you how can we checkmate a black king a lone king it doesn't matter which color it is how can you checkmate a king with two bishops and I decided to show you this video because even many players even top level players also face problems in these and games to checkmate a lone king with two bishops after watching this video if you don't know how to checkmate the, with two bishops you're going to learn it full, fully and completely and you're also going to have very fun and uh, the video is going to be very short so that it would be easy for you to understand it and uh, the time uh, you will be watching this video would also will not get wasted so without any further ado let's start so I, I am assuming that you all know how a bishop moves a bishop moves diagonally and I, I think you all know that okay. so I have set up any random position where the, bish where the white is having two bishops and black is alone with only a single king so before checkmating uh, I have always said in my previous video before checkmating we need to set our goals so if I want to checkmate black king and I want what type of position I want so that I would be able to checkmate black king so what I am assuming here is, I want this position on the board. The reason I want this position on the board here is, first of all, it's a checkmate. The white is definitely having all coordinations and it's perfect checkmate. This is the position which we are going to uh, see in the in the how can we checkmate with two bishop. And it doesn't matter where the black bishop here, the black bishop can anywhere in this whole diagonal and there is another position which can also be met while checkmating the black king here this is the second position it's a checkmate if you can see it's a complete checkmate the black king is having nowhere to go and it doesn't matter where this white bishop is and it also doesn't matter which where this black bishop is it's a checkmate to checkmate uh, the black king with two bishops it's compulsory to kick the king in any of these for corner squares it is very compulsory so let's return to this starting position and let's start so first of all before check meeting there are some steps we need to follow so the first step is to come as you can see this whole chessboard the main you i think you can see the what what are the four center squares on this full chessboard the four center squares are the center squares. I have highlighted these four center squares with the red color. So it would be much easier for you to see. So I'm going to use these two bishops to cover these four center squares. This is the first step we need to do. So to cover these. So I'm going to use my light bishop to cover these two center squares. And I'm going to use this dark bishop to cover these dark squares. Okay. So let's start. So it's white to move, and the best move for in, in this position for white is to play a normal move, which covers these two squares. Can you find it? Okay. So all those who have found bishop c6, right? It's the right move. The idea of bishop c6 in this position here is here the bishop is covering both the center squares. So where can the king go? The king is having five places to go. So let's. Take king to f5. Now, suggest a move which covers these two center squares. Uh, okay, if you found bishop d4, right. This is the move which covers these two center squares. And as we know, the white bishop is covering these two center squares. So the first step has been completed. The bishops are covering the center squares. Now the second step is to put both the bishops in these center squares okay so after playing bishop d4 here black is having one two three four five options so i have taken king to f4 the idea of taking king to f4 in this position here is here first of all the king is chopping this bishop e4 idea because i have just told you to put the bishops on these center squares so first of all the, the king is covering the e4 square so the only square for the bishop to go to cover the center square is to go on d5. Uh, now as we can see, 
the bishops are on the center and if you look closely in this position you are going to see a very interesting thing the interesting thing in this position here is if you see the diagonals you will be able to see that i have limited the black king and the black is, uh, the black king is, is only having this this much light areas to go and all other squares have been covered by the two bishops this is the idea of putting the bishops in the center so here white have played bishop to g5 and now black played king to f5 keeping the king near the center okay so that it won't get checkmated so easily so after king f5 now it's time to use a king to come on e3 here the king is having two squares here king can go to e3 or the king can go to e6 this is the idea so that we can checkmate black king so my idea is to first of all to put the king on e3 because the e3 square is much much uh, less distance comparatively to e6 here the idea of putting the king on e3 or e6 i'm going to tell you so first after playing king f5 here white played king to e2 a simple idea so the idea is to play king e3 and the idea of i'm telling you to put the king on e3 or e6 here is here by putting the king on e3 or e6 in this position here first of all it white grabs the most space from the black king so that the king would be having much less space so that black would be having some force move like one to two move and it would be much easier for white to checkmate black king so after playing king e2 here black is going to play king f4 the idea of playing king f4 in this position here is here black is taking away the these three squares and what i want to do is here i want to put the king on e3 so what can white do in this position here white bishops i cannot move white bishops because the bishops are placed perfectly so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to play a waiting move something like king to f2 playing king d2 is also perfectly fine here i've chosen king f2 and after king f2 black plays king to f5 and now now i can come to e3 here the king is forced to go on f5 because black is having these three squares so after king f5 i'm going to play king e3 and now i have successfully joined the king in the battle with the bishops so after playing king e3 here black here the black king is having three squares only so if black plays king to g4 the idea of playing king g4 for black in this position here is here as we can see i have set i have put my king on e3 which can which is now dark squares on f2 and g1 is now no longer protected that's why black have played king to g4 and the idea of playing king g4 here for black here is here black is planning to play king g3 king h2 king g1 and trying to run with the king and this is what i want after playing king g4 here white is going to grab more space so that it can limit the black king as i i can see the black the white bishops are covering this square so basically black is having this much square to go around freely so now i'm going to play bishop to e4 the idea of playing bishop e4 here is i am just cutting the square so that it would be much easier for white to get uh, to checkmate black king here now i'm covering these two diagonals now king is having much less space than before so black plays king to g3 the idea is to play king h2 king g1 and run away now i'm going to play bishop to e5 check not allowing king to come on h2 and slowly and steadily if you can see i'm slowly and steadily grabbing more space in the center and giving less squares to the black king so if you look closely the black is having three squares to go so let's play king to g4 after playing king g4 i'm going to play bishop to f4 the idea of playing bishop f4 in this position here is here the bishop is covering more squares and the king is having much less squares than before the idea of playing bishop f4 in this position first of all here the black is planning to play king g5 and trying to run away that's why i'm taking more much more space 
than uh, that I can. That's why I have played bishop to f4 in this position. Now the king cannot lo no longer can go to g5 and try to run away. So after playing bishop to f4, here black is having three squares. He can go anywhere. So let's play king to h4, which looks most reasonable move. So after playing king h4, I'm going to play bishop to f3. And the idea of playing bishop f3 here is here I have decided to kick the bishop, hit, hit, kick the king into this corner. So that this is the only thing which one should do before checkmating the black king. First you need to kick the king in the corner. That's only we can checkmate the black king. So after king to h4, I have played bishop to f3. And after playing bishop f3, I'm covering now the h5 square as well as the g4 square. And now the king is having much less space than before. Actually, king is having only two squares. He can go to h3 or he can go to h4. So black is forced to play king h3. And now I'm going to come with the king by playing king f2. And the king is having only one square. He he's forced to go to h4. So here we have king h4. Now we are going to play bishop to e2. The idea of playing bishop e2 is bishop e2 is a baiting move because I want to put my bishop on g5 to take the square on h4 and try to kick the king in the cent in the corner. But for now I cannot play bishop g5 because king will simply capture the bishop. That's why I have played it, a waiting move something like bishop to e2. And now the king is having four square or four only one square to go on h3. So black plays king h3 and now we are going to play bishop to g5. The idea of playing bishop g5 here is now the bishop takes the h4 square as well. So now the king is having only one square to go on h2. So black goes here. And now we are going to play bishop f1. I'm going to take away the h3 square even. And as we can as you can see that white has successfully coordinated the black king and now it's time to checkmate the black king. So black is having only one square to go on h1. So after king h1, we are going to play bishop to g2 check. And now black is forced to go on h2. And before checkmating the black king, I want to tell you in this position, many of the beginners play many. I mean it, many players usually play bishop to f4. The idea of playing bishop f4 in this position here is many people say things that okay, by playing bishop f4, I'm even taking away the h2 squares, which minimizes the king area but this is the wrong thing that many players do if you look closely the the black king is having nowhere to go and it's the perfect stalemate and this is what black wants so before playing the move always check that the king should at least have one square to go so that it cannot get checkmated so sorry so that it cannot get stalemated so after, at the place of bishop f4, here I'm going to play bishop to g2 check. So now here black is forced to play king h2 and now comes bishop f4 checkmate. And this is the position that I showed you. Yeah, uh, some check some things like this can also be a checkmate. I've showed you this checkmate. This checkmate is also perfectly fine. So this is the basic idea that I've showed you to require to checkmate black king. First of all, you need to grab the center with your bishops. Then you, to, then you need to put the bishops in on the center squares and then you need to slowly and steadily bring the king in the game and then after bringing the king you need to slowly use your bishops to minimize the areas of the black king your opponent king and then you are need to coordinate the black king slowly and steadily and then you with the final blow you need to checkmate it, your opponent and before checkmating your opponent you should all this before playing the move, you need, you need to always check whether your opponent having at least one square to go. So this is all for today. Uh, this video is a, a little bit longer. It's around 15 minutes. So uh, sorry about that. And if you like this all explanation by me, then please support me by subscribing to this channel so that I will come up with these new videos for you. And please tell me in the comment section that how you like this video and if you really like this video then you can like the video subscribe to my channel i'm going to come up with these new videos for you so please stay tuned thank you for watching and bye bye